Anne here from Little Bell Lane Creations back with you for month four of the Galaxy Block of the Month. So these are the fabrics that you'll have in your little parcels from your quilt shop this month. Again, we have another envelope with all our papers. We have our card telling us what blocks or showing you what blocks I'm making this month. So we're back to two and a half blocks this month. We are playing with the um, Who's Your Dandy print. So the Hedgehog in the Dandelion print in the Glimmer colorway. We're matching that with our tiny stripes in uh, Spark. <laughs> our tiny dots in Sky. Our tiny stripes in Songbird. And our tiny dots in Candy. And we've also got a strip each of the Fairy Flakes in the ink and the paper. So let me just push those out of the way move the papers a closer look as you know by now i am duplicating the blocks which are on these cards so they're the two and a half blocks i'm making this month we have a fat quarter of this who's your dandy print to play with as you can see let me move all that out of the way it's another one that's quite dense in its repeat so you can see We've got all our hedgehogs going this way and all our hedgehogs going this way. So basically the repeat in this pattern is the two hedgehogs there. So this quilt, we're working on a repeat of six for the centre of our blocks. Now the way my fat quarter's cut, I've got one, two, three, four across my fat quarter. I've got one, two, three of him going down. One, two, three, four. I've got five of him going across, so that's good. And one, two, almost three of him going down at the salvage so more than enough but once you start cutting your um blocks you'll be able to get the two full ones without a problem i suggest when you come to cutting your half block look at the side of your fabric and see if you can use any that's um so you don't waste your fabric basically so the first fussy cut for me this month is my template is this guy He's going to be my first fussy cut. So what I'm looking at when I fussy cut him, I want to have um, like a dark blue center with a flower, dark blue around the center with a flower right in the center. Let me get the card so it's not as clear as mud for you. See how I want to achieve the dark blue and I want like my own pink flower to appear in the center. So to achieve that, basically we're putting our template on our hedgehog. We're sliding it down so we get the hedgehog to sit within our etched lines. And then we're looking down here as to where we can get this on a flower. Now I'm actually going to, am I going to move it up or am I going to move it down? I want to create, remember that flower in the center of my block? So I think I might just do that. It's not exactly the same. Oh, hang on, if we go that one. Yep, yeah, I might do, no. Yeah, I'm going to do that one. So what I'm going to do, my reference points I'm looking at, I've got, let me zoom you in a little bit. Let me move him down. You see where my template is? I could get my pencil, but I don't have it with me. This little, um, which one am I going for? I can go for either. Now I want the flower, so I'm going to go that one. So my reference dot for the hole on the top of my template is going to be this tiny dot of a flower here so I've got my hedgehog I've got a flower and then I've got the tiny dot so I'm going to nest my template at that tiny dot there and then I'm going to put the bottom hole of my template in the center the yellow center of that flower there so that's going to be easy to duplicate for my six fussy cuts it's going to give me my hedgehog spinning around and it's going to give me the pink center that I'm looking for there the other um <clears throat> one that I'm making is having this movement with the flower of the center so it appears this bit at the side creating the movement is the back side of a hedgehog so I just need to look bearing in mind I fussy cut these quite some time ago digitally and I've got to try and replicate where I got them on the fabric so I don't know we can pick so it's something like this that i appear to have gone for because i've got a hedgehog's back down this part of my template so it's just a matter of having a play so i could go something 
like that. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, we can have a play. I'll get the um could get the mirror out, but it's not going to give me a true replica to show you what I'm after. So anyway, the other fussy card that we can do, if you want two hedgehogs in, we can go over to him, and that would be a cute one there. Again, I'm using that flower at the top. I would put my reference hole of my template there, and then I would nest this one down in the green at the bottom, or we could always lift it a little bit higher. That would be another great one. If I put my reference hole... Might help if I bring into shot, hey. If I put my reference hole in the center of that flower, so on the yellow bit of that flower, bring down so we go over the hedgehog. And if I sit right at the bottom of that pink flower, it's going to give me a nice fun effect because I'm going to have a burst of pink at the bottom. And these flowers rotating around the six cuts is going to give me a nice bit of movement. So what I am going to do with my fat quarter this month Similar to what I did with the second fat quarter I was cutting in the month that we were doing the um the bear print with the symmetrical. I'm going to cut over, flip it over, and I'm going to cut my fussy cuts. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to give me one fussy cut. Then I'm going to come back in here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and do six of him. And then I'm going to look at what other from in the gaps that I can go forward and fussy cut and see how many I can get out of here. So I'll pop back once I've cut my two lots of six to show you what my fat quarter looks like and um, where I'm going in between those holes to fussy cut more pieces. Okay, I'm back. What I've gone ahead of done is, like I said, I've gone and cut the fussy cuts out I need to make the two and a half blocks we're making this month. So the first one with the blue is this guy. So you can see I've cut him. One, two, three. Why does it look a bit skew-whiffed? I mustn't have cut one. Oh, how many have I got? One, two, three, four. Okay, that's why I'm confused. One, two, three, four. I just haven't cut him out yet. Five, six. Then I need... My three pieces for my half blocks. You can see I've looked to the salvage and found that I can get three there without cutting into the, any of the bulk of my fabric. And then the flower piece that I couldn't find before I found. And it is here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that piece, where can I show if I put it back in? If I put him back in there. Oh, can you see? Yes, if I lay it flat. It's that hedgehog there, and what I've done with my template, I've come and laid it over the butterfly at the top and put the flower at the bottom. So what I've done with my seam allowance, we can see it if I bring it up, probably not. So can you see that's how I've cut him? So I've put it so that the butterfly is centering in my template at the top. I've got a majority of the flower there and the etched line of my template will eliminate the ear of the hedgehog is going to be my seam allowance so it won't show on my fussy cut. So that's the two and a half blocks from my fat quarter. What I'm going to go do now is obviously cut the one I haven't cut out yet. I'm going to go in with my template. I'm going to look at other fussy cuts I can get because you would have noticed by now every month I'm trying to get at least six to eight different fussy cuts out of my fabric and I'm making the extra six point stars and those extra six point stars are secret stitching behind the background for something new and fun in the future which you will eventually see well you're seeing the center blocks but you'll see the whole quilt come together at a later date so I'm just going to bring in my template and decide do I want another hedgehog block or do I just want a floral block so I can come in, I've got one, two, three, four, five. I can easily come and feature this hedgehog guy again. So I can look at what I can do. Uh, I could do that. So that's going to nest nicely against the top of these blocks here. So I'll be able to get one, two, three, four. Should be able to get five. And then I can come up here and do six. So that's going to give me another full block. When that hole there is cut out, I can also come up here and look at what I've got left here. That could be a fun 
floral block so if I centered that down the bottom I'm making the most out of that space that's there so again this is why when we cut our pieces out of our fabric why we actually come in and cut on the sewn line and because I haven't cut one this is another opportunity for me to show you by cutting on our drawn line I think I just said sewing before didn't I by cutting on our drawn line we're maintaining that integrity of every piece of fabric around that hole so that we can come in and do another fussy cut and the simple as anything to cut in on the draw line I've got my finger underneath and I'm just using it to push the fabric into my scissors I've removed my finger I snip and then you just go and cut along the drawn line if you were using a rotary cutter your rotary cut is never going to stop at the end of your drawn line. You're always going to go a little bit over where your drawn line is. And that potentially cuts into your next fussy cut and assists in creating extra waste, if you want to look at it that way, of your fabric. So if you just go along and cut on the drawn line, and I find this repetitive action actually quite soothing. Is that the word I'm looking for? It just it's part of the process um, we're hand stitching we're slowing down we're enjoying the process this is English paper piecing is not like a quilt in a weekend you do that on your sewing machine and that's still fun to do but other times we just want to slow down and enjoy the process appreciate our fabrics so I'm also looking at the top here one two three four five so I can come in maybe not in that one no that's not going to work but you know what that will be good for I've been making a hexagon quilt with my scraps. So I might just let me grab it out. Uh, yes. Don't know if you've been around for a while, you might have seen this project. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to bump you. I've been making this huge, I call it my mega hexi quilt from my Chula Pink scraps. So it's got ranges in it going back years and years. So I might get my hexagon template out and um, start cutting some hexagons because I think I've got another whole row to go on the bottom of this quilt and then I can send it off to be long armed which also brings me to have a quick look papers in your pieces when you come to sewing a quilt together or after you've made a quilt block you can remove the papers from your work as you can see here this one here I can unwrap it a bit there are no papers in my work the only papers that I will find in this quilt will be on the bottom edge let me flip it over I'll take it off here for a sec I've got to be very careful to support this project so it's quite heavy and if I don't support it correctly it's going to stretch so you'll see here the only papers left in my work is the bottom edge all the other papers of this quilt have been removed so that I can reuse them and the only reason I've got papers in the bottom is because I want to add another complete row of hexagon flowers across the bottom so what does that mean for the blocks we're working on two seconds here are the blocks we've been working on in the months until now I'll move that out of the way you can remove all the blocks from a all the papers from the center of your blocks you can do it now or you can do it at the end I'll probably start doing mine soon because I don't want to get to the last month and then have to sit and remove papers the only papers that need to be left in your blocks are the ones at the outermost edge so I'm going to leave my spots and I'm going to leave my sim blocks so my six pointed stars and my small kites can come out of every block on these full ones on the half blocks yeah, there's not really much you can remove you can remove your two small kites and that's about it then when we start joining our blocks together we can start removing the papers as we go it makes it so much easier to sew because as you saw that hexagon quilt I just had you can scrunch it in your hands to sew more pieces in you can't scrunch papered blocks it becomes very cumbersome so there you go a little bit off track but that's what you can do I'm going to go based these shapes and sew them together um, and when I come back I'll show you those centers and I'll show you some of the other centers that I've had a chance to make out of my leftover fat quarter okay I've finished all my fussy cutting of my fat quarter 
and this is what I have left so it's not a lot of wastage um I will throw this fat quarter into my scrap basket because it could be good later on for fussy cutting if I want some random hexagons I've still got a cute little hedgehog or two there so that's yeah what I have left of my fat quarter but what I made from my fat quarter you remember these I might zoom you in a little bit oops in there we go so these were the two and a half blocks we were making this month so that's the center of the first one so that'll be the center of my oh how can we show you here keeping it in that's the center of the blue one this is the center of the one with the green stripe and this will be the half center for my cute little half block so that's the two and a half that I need to make this month's blocks but in addition to that I managed to get the six hexagons for the other hexagon quilt I showed you plus I have two other full centers I managed to get this cute little guy as well and this one here so there you go out of my fat quarter I got four complete centers a half center and six hexagons for my other quilt so I'll pop back photos of the two and a half blocks once I've finished. I'm going to go cut those fabric up now and get stitching. I'll drop photos back of the finished blocks when I'm done. And just quick housekeeping. Remember to save those extra papers from this month. Put them in the same spot that you've put or saved your previous month's extra papers in. They're all going to be used in the last month just to square off the top and bottom of our quilt and fill in a couple of side bits before we add our border. So happy month four. Have fun with your fabric. I'm looking forward to seeing what fussy cuts you find within your fabric. And happy stitching. <laughs>